Number seven. First thing I ask is, are we... Back here now. First thing I ask is, are we in orbit? Well, if I read this, it looks like we're launching straight up from the Earth because it says before stopping and then falling back down. Okay? Then I ask myself, is this question asking me how much work? So, so anyways, since I'm not in orbit, I know I'm not going to do this. Okay? Not in orbit. Then I ask myself, Brett, is this question asking how much work was involved? It's meant to be a really easy question to answer. It's meant to be really obvious. Is this question asking how much work is involved? No, it doesn't. It's not talking about work. So this is my checklist. Orbit, FG equals FC. No. Work, no. Then I fall back on conservation of energy. The amount of kinetic initial and the amount of potential initial has to equal the amount of kinetic final and the amount of potential final. That's how I'm going to handle this one. Here's the other way I was able to come to that conclusion. Emily, do you notice we have an initial launch velocity? Oh, we have an initial kinetic. Uh, stopping. Oh, my final kinetic, Brett. Zero. Kinetic energy is a half mv initial squared plus now I can't use mgh anymore we're doing a cosmic question here with big distances so I'm gonna have to use negative big G big M little m over R initial which I think is gonna be the earth's radius because we're starting out on the surface of the earth equals negative big G big M little m all over our final and our final is what they're asking me to find. That would be the distance from the center of the Earth. I don't think I would try and get the R final by itself, because this is way too complicated an expression. I think I would plug in the numbers, plug in the numbers, get an answer, and then recognize the R final moves up and the answer moves down. And it's going to be negative G, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite, divided by whatever the heck this side worked out to. Is that okay? Oh, you try it the rest of the way yourself, but that's how I would approach that one. Is that okay for anybody else wondering? Okay. Then find the distance the rocket travels in kilometers. Well, divide by 1,000. Right. Oh, it wants the height from the surface. Well, I wouldn't ask that, but you can figure that out. Is that all right? We're good? Any others? Um, I half like that question. I half like that question. I half like that question. I got a couple of different versions of tests. I'm pretty sure it's on one of them. Although I think to make it funner, I move it to the moon or to Mars or something like that. Because, you know, why not? Any others? Let's finish off the unit then. All right, so a little reminder, your test is going to be on Friday, February 24th. And let's begin. Roller coasters. This was actually, Caitlin, the bonus question that I threw at you on quiz one. It says this, example one. At the top off, should say at the top of, the 12 centimeter radius loop, the 350 gram toy car experiences a force from the track of, 200, of 2 newtons. Assume the car is released from rest and that the track is frictionless. A, figure out its release height, and B, figure out the range R that it travels after leaving the ramp. I don't know if any of you, when you were growing up, had the little matchbox cars and the little uh, plastic stick-together race tracks that I did growing up. A few of you are nodding your heads, most of the guys, but some of the girls too. Okay, It always came with a little loop-de-loop, -loop, which was way cool, I thought. And I don't know if you were a nerd enough to try and actually experiment a little bit with, 
what's the minimum height I could get it so that it, my car would just barely make it around the loop. Okay, We're actually going to come back to this question in a second. So let's go to example two. Orbits. A satellite in orbit around the Earth is at radius r and speed v. So it's in a stable orbit. Ah, but it's hit by a small rock, and that small rock causes it to slow down. It loses some kinetic energy. What happens to the radius of the orbit? Assume the satellite begins and ends up in a circular, stable orbit. Okay? So we have a satellite. Collision. Is the new orbit the same radius as before? Is the new orbit at a higher radius than before? Is the new orbit at a le lower radius than before? And convince me. Hmm. 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 Any suggestions? What would happen if it slowed down? Okay. Why? Well, The original V was exactly enough to maintain a stable orbit. And what was orbit, Kara? Orbit was actually free-falling to the Earth, but free-falling to the Earth at just the right sideways speed so that when you fell to the Earth, even though you were falling, you were matching the curvature of the Earth. You're moving sideways. So if we slowed you down, you wouldn't be falling as fast. You wouldn't be moving sideways as fast. You'd be falling, but you're not moving sideways as fast. Your radius is slowly going to decrease. It's going to decrease. It's going to decrease till eventually. In fact, that's how the shuttle leaves orbit. It fires its reverse engines, and it just decreases its speed a tiny bit. And it will gradually, gradually, gradually free fall closer and closer and closer to the Earth. So let's mention that here. As V decreases, the orbit will, fancy word, decay since sideways V no longer free falls at the curvature of the Earth. A uh, little technical. For what it's worth, actually, the final orbit is actually an ellipse that passes through the collision point, then moves closer to the Earth on the far side of the orbit. It's not quite circular anymore. Oh, sir, look up. You want to read that? Okay. 
Example three. This is why I skipped example one. Example three is actually is actually a nicer question, an introduction to a roller coaster loop. A roller coaster barely makes it around a vertical loop of radius 4 meters. Find the normal force of a 50 kilogram passenger when the coaster returns to the bottom of the loop. Okay, I think we're going to do a bunch of stuff before that. Is this the one that I want? Let me just double check. Nope. Oh. We're actually going to add in part. Uh, we're going to add a part A to this. Part A. Find the min uh, minimum height H of the ramp. First question I want to ask myself is what's the minimum height required here? Okay. This is going to be an energy question, but what I really need to look at is location A and location B, the top of the loop. The kinetic energy at A plus the potential energy at A has to equal the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energy at B. Let's assume we're starting from rest. And I now have this M G H at A equals a half M V at B squared plus M G H at B. And we're on the Earth, so I can use the shortcut potential energy. I don't need to go cosmic here. I could. More work than necessary. Zay, what do you notice about the M's? Do you have to step on a scale before you get on a roller coaster? Yeah. Cool. How fast am I traveling right here? Well, if I barely complete the loop, Here's my free body diagram right there. What are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. If you barely complete the loop, so you're just about ready to fall off the track, what's the normal force? How heavy would you feel if you just barely made it over? If you were just about to fall off the track? Jacob. Zero. So, and since normal force is what we interpret as how heavy we feel, what's the normal force? Zero. In fact, there's my free body diagram right there. Okay? No normal force. What path is this coaster tracing out? Ah, so I can say this. Gravity is what's at the top pulling me into a circle. The reason I walked over here, Emily, is I want some kind of an expression for the velocity at the top. So I think I'm going to plug in, if that's OK. <coughs> hey.
Hey, once again, woohoo! And I get an expression for v. v is going to be the square root of... Actually, I was going to get an expression for v, Brianna, and say it was the square root of ger, but I don't actually want a v over here. What do I really want over here? A v what? Oh, heck, why don't I just do this? And it turns out at the top, that's an expression for v. I get this. G height at A equals, I'll replace the 1 half with a 0.5. V squared is actually GER plus, yeah. And now something really bizarre happens. Zay, what do you notice about the gravitational field in this question? G, what happens? They also cancel. Say what? It means if you could somehow, like Star Trek, beam this roller coaster to Jupiter, it would work just fine there too. The gravitational field plays no role in this. Whatever height that we find works on any planet, on the moon, on the Earth, doesn't matter. It works actually independent of gravity, which is kind of nerdly cool. In fact, I get this. The minimum height is equal to 0.5 r plus the height at b. And now I'm going to get a tiny bit clever one more time, Kara, because this ends up with such a lovely equation that makes my little math nerd heart go pitter-pat. What do I call this distance right here? What have we called it traditionally? It begins with letter r at radius. So how far from here to here? Just from the middle here. Radius. Jacob, how far from here to here? Also a single radius. And now, what did you say? What's the total distance? You know what? I can replace the height with two r's, can I not? The height at the top of the loop. And look what that gives me. This is kind of nerdily cool. The minimum height is 0.5r plus 2r. Katie, call me silly, but those are like terms. What is 0.5r plus 2r? Squared, really? Don't think so. We're not multiplying. You know what the minimum height of any roller coaster hill to hit a circular loop has to be? has to be two and a half times the radius of the loop. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. And that minimum, they would build a huge safety margin in. But I'm expecting roller coaster designers know this equation like the back of their hand. Uh, in our case, what was the radius? I've scrolled down. What's the radius of this loop? What does it say? Four? I don't even need a calculator. Two and a half times four, I think, is ten. I have to say, I do kind of like that equation. I'm not saying I like this question, like this question. I'm just saying, as a nerd, I love the fact, Mitchell, that it becomes so clean. How high does your hill need to be? Two and a half times the radius. That's also ignoring friction. I'm willing to bet if you tried it, Matt, with your old Hot Wheels track, two and a half times exactly wouldn't quite make it. You'd lose some energy due to friction. You'd probably have to go three times or four three and a half times or something like that. Okay. Now let's see if we can answer whoop. The question, let's put a little uh, B right there. I did A, find the minimum height H of the ramp first. B, find the normal force of a fifty kilogram passenger when the coaster returns to the bottom of the loop. Okay. Well, what are the forces acting right here? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. What else? Got to be. Just at the end of this loop, Andrew, what path is this thing still tracing out? 
So who's winning? Where does your net force always have to be pointing if you're moving in a circle? Toward the... So, you know what? I forgot to put a normal force on there. I think now my equation is going to be normal force minus mg equals mv squared over r. The normal force equals mv squared over r plus mg, which Mitchell tells me I'll feel heavier at the bottom of the loop because normally I feel mg and now I'm adding something. Unless my velocity is zero, in which case I'm standing still and it's kind of a pointless question. Is that okay so far, kiddo? Yeah? Did they give me the mass? 50 kilograms? Do I know G? Yep. Do I know the radius? Yep. Do I know how fast I'm traveling at the bottom? Nope. Nope. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. So let's make a little note here. We need V. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Look up for one second. Let's call right here location C. Is that okay, Zay? And what I'm really going to say then is instead of initial, initial, and final, and final, at B at the top of the loop, at C at the bottom of the loop. The amount of kinetic energy you have at the top and the amount of potential energy you have at the top is equal to the amount of kinetic energy at the bottom. Oh, how much potential energy do I have at the bottom of the loop? Woohoo! Kinetic energy is a half mv at b squared plus mgh at b, and that equals a half mv at c squared. Zay, look, 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 look. Nice. Oh, and I had an expression for v squared at the top of the loop. I've scrolled down, but we wrote it somewhere. What was v squared at the top of the loop as it turned out equal to? It was kind of a nice little expression. What was it? Grr. So if I hear you, M, I can go 0.5 grr. Plus, oh, and I had an expression for the height at the top of the loop, too, did I not? 2, grr, right, uh, g, and then 2, r, equals 0.5 vc squared. You know what? I think I can, I got like, like terms just about here. Let's times by 2, times by 2 and times by 2 to get rid of that one half and get rid of that one half. Yo, wouldn't what be 2.5? Here, what's my height at B? How far from here to here? R. How far from here to here? R. Okay. Now, this. by the way, at A, I didn't want to deal with that because... I don't know if the question didn't tell me if I was standing still or not here. I, am, I, I said minimum height. I assumed I was, but I know they told me that I barely made it through the loop, so I used this height here because I knew more information about it. Is that all right? Make, 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 make. Good, 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 good. In fact, I get this, Connor. Gur plus, uh, I guess, four gur. What is V squared at the bottom? I think... 5 gur, isn't it? 4 and 1? Yeah, Emily, or no? Yeah? Let's plug that into here. The normal force at the bottom is going to be M 5 gur. I don't need to square it because I solved for V squared over R plus 
mg question Brett you good I haven't made a mistake again something kind of neat happens turns out Connor what ha what cancels in this fraction and you get this 5 mg's plus 1 mg you know how much heavier you feel at the bottom of a roller coaster loop if you've just barely made it Six MGs. You feel six times heavier. That's why you feel pressed down into your seat at the bottom of the loop. Yeah. Here it's MV squared over R. Is that not the circular motion equation? Not. We're not doing gravity here, right? Gravity had an R squared on the bottom, but circular motion had an R. Go ahead. right here. So v squared is what we found an expression for, right? So I can replace the v squared with a 5gr, and there was already an r sitting there on the bottom. I just dropped it down because I replaced v squared. Is that, is that right? I'm running out of room here, which is part of the problem too. I didn't use good spacing here. Oh, uh, so final answer will be 6 times 50 times 9.8. Next time you're on a roller coaster with a loop, when you come out of the loop at the bottom, notice how heavy you feel. Or I think I mentioned this, if you're on a good roller coaster, the California Screaming at Disney is a great one. As you hit the loop, lean forward and then try straightening up while you're in the loop or try holding your arms straight out while you're in the loop. And you'll find at the bottom, you feel a force pushing them down. It's actually inertia, but you feel six times heavier. Is that all right? Let's go back to example one then. Here's our toy car. More roller coaster loops, except now we're on a smaller scale. But this time, it doesn't just barely make it. It tells me that at the top of the loop, it experiences a normal force, a force from the track of 2 newtons. It says, find its release height. OK. We'll still start out by going kinetic energy initial and potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final and potential energy final, where this right here is initial and this right here is final. Uh, are any of these zero? Well, it says released, so I think my initial kinetic, I think we're starting from rest, because release suggests you're holding it and let it go. I get this. MGH initial equals a half MV final squared plus MGH final. Zay, once again, yay, mass is canceled. Now, unfortunately, this time, velocity squared is not going to be GER. Let's draw our free body diagram. There's the roller coaster while it's at the top. What are the forces acting on it, Connor? Get the obvious one. And then it says the track is also pushing with two newtons, a normal force. Come on. Two newtons. What path am I tracing out at the top of this track, Connor? So where must my net force be? Toward the... You know what? Both of these are towards the middle. They're both winners. My equation's going to look like this. mg plus 2 equals mv squared over r. Sadly, 
not as nice. You know what? I think I'm going to go Mg plus 2 really quickly here. The mass is 350 grams, which is 0 0.350 kilograms. Point three five times nine point eight plus two. I get five point four three equals m v squared over r. Now I can get the v by itself a bit easier. I think v is going to be five point four three times r divided by m square rooted. going to be 5.43 times, what's the radius? Is it 12 centimeters? So 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.35, square root of that. The velocity at the top is 1.3644. Oh, and Nicole, how would I get the H? Because they want the initial height. How would I get the H by itself? How to move the G over? Yeah, you know what? I think my equation is going to look like this. The initial height is equal to 0 0.5 times 1.3644 squared plus 9 times 0.24. The final height is 24 centimeters because the radius is 12 centimeters. All divided by 9.8. 0. <coughs> 0.5 times this answer squared plus 9.8 times 0. 0.24 all divided by 9.8. You get 33.5 centimeters, 0.335. Someone else double check me. Yeah? 0.335 meters. And, Connor, the minimum would have been 2.5 times the 12 centimeters. If you started 30 centimeters high, you would just barely make it over the track, ignoring friction. Here we had some extra force, which meant we had some extra kinetic energy. To do, we started a little bit higher. So that also jives in with my observation. Is that OK? Uh, it would be 33.5 centimeters, but I changed it to meters. I did. Right? I didn't put a 24 there. I put a 0. 0.24 there. Right? Yeah, yeah? Okay. We're done the unit. Circular motion and gravitation. The biggest unit of the year. We spent a lot of time on this. That's why you have two unit reviews. You only have to hand in one. I would do both of them if I were you. Both answer keys are online. Some of the questions get a bit repetitive. What's your homework? A little bit more practice. Number one is good. Number four is good. Number five is good. Six is good. Seven is good. Eight is good. Nine B.
and then work on the review.